most common type of motion in machines is the rotary motion. Almost any moving machine will have parts that are rotating. Motion is generated by maybe an engine, a wind or a water turbine as a rotational motion. Then the motion gets translated further in the machine using gears or pulleys. All these parts are rotating parts. These rotating elements have a lot in common. Any rotating shaft has to be supported at a bearing point or most commonly two bearing points. And then you have the section of the shaft where the rotation is needed for the function. For example, there is a gear mounted on it. If you want to use the tolerances that we know so far to control this rotating function, you will have to use straightness to control the straightness of the center line of the rotating section, also cylindricity to control the surface, and also concentricity to control the center line of the rotating section, and the bearing section are concentric. But what if I told you that there is one tolerance that you can use to combine all these together? This is the run-out tolerance. Let's look at how the measurement of a run-out tolerance is done. This part here has two cylindrical sections. The first one has a diameter of 20 and we call it center line datum A. And then we point at the surface of this other cylinder with a run-out tolerance, which looks like an arrow, with a value of 0.1, with reference to datum A. The way this measurement is done is by fixing the center line of A as a reference in the measurement. A dial gauge is then pressed against the surface of the tolerated surface. When the gauge is pressed against the surface, I set the value to zero. Then I start rotating the part around the axis of the bigger section and I measure the height again. This way, the dial gauge measures the difference in height between the different points of the surface while it's rotating with reference to axis A. As long as the difference in height is smaller than the value of the tolerance, then the part passes the inspection. This difference in height could be resulting from a concentricity error between the two cylinders. So one end of the surface is further to the dial gauge than the other one. Or it could be a result of a cylindricity or circularity error. Maybe it was not a circle, but it looked like that. I will still get different readings when I rotate the part around A. So, using the run-out tolerance, I cannot know where the deviation is coming from. I don't know what is causing the error, but I know that there is an error that will affect the rotating function around A, with a value, for example, of 0.1, regardless of the origin of this error. For you, if you are a designer, why would you pay so much attention to the source of the error? For you, the function is what matters. But if you are in manufacturing and you find a part that is reading 0.2 out of tolerance, using only the run-out measurement, you cannot find the source of the error in order to correct it. You would have to measure concentricity, circularity, straightness and so on individually. What I measured now is the circular run-out. If I now want to control not only the run out on one circle on the part, but on all cross sections, then I would have to use the total run out tolerance. This is similar to the difference between circularity and cylindricity. Using circularity or circular run out, you still measure in different cross sections, but the result of each cross section is evaluated independently from the other cross sections. But if you use the total run out, which symbol looks like this, two connected arrows instead of one. The measurement has to be done on different cross sections and all the results 
has to be evaluated as if it was one cross section. So the difference in height is now evaluated between all the points on the whole cylinder, not only on one cross section.